size. One fading moment, smart, with 20 watchful, weary, tedious nights. Oh, if half we won, perhaps we'll have this game. Lost, why then, a greedy slaver won? However, but a folly bought with wit, or else a wit by folly vanquished. So by your circumstance, you call me fool. So by your circumstance, I fear you'll prove. I can't love you, Cavalat. I am not love. Love is your master, for he masters you. And he that is so yoked by a fool in the face should uh, not be chronicled for wise. Yet writers say, as in the sweetest bud the eating canker dwells, so eating love inhabits in the finest wits of all. <laughs> and writers say, as the most forward bud is eaten by the canker ere it blow, so too by love is the young and tender wit turned to folly. <laughs> Blasting in his butt, losing his virtue, even in his prime, and all fair effects of future hopes. But wherefore waste thy time to counsel thee? Let our devotery to fond desire once more. And you. My father at the road expects my coming, there to see me shift. And, and therefore will I bring thee, Valentine. Sweet Proteus, no. Now let us take our leave. To Milan, let me hear of thy success in love by letters, and what news, what news else? The tide is here in absence of thy friend. And likewise, we'll visit thee with mine. All happiness be chance to thee in Milan. Much to you at home. So, oh! <laughs> Farewell! <laughs> he after honor hunts, I after love. He leaves his friends to dignify them more. I leave myself, my friends, and all for love. Oh, thou, Julia. Thou hast metamorphosed me! <laughs> Made me neglect my studies, lose my time, war with good counsel, set the world at naught! Made wit with musing, weak, and heart sick with thought! Sir Proteus, save you! So you, my master! But now he parted hence to embark from the line. Twenty to one, and he is ship away, and I am like a sheep in losing him. Indeed, a sheep doth very often stray, and if the shepherd be a while away, you conclude that my master is a shepherd then, and I a sheep? I do. <laughs> <laughs> that I can deny by a circumstance. It shall go hard, but I will prove it by another. The shepherd seeks the sheep, and not the sheep the shepherd. But I seek my master, my master seeks not me. Therefore, I am no sheep. The sheep for fodder follow the shepherd. The shepherd for food follows not the sheep. Thou for wages followest thy master. Thy master for wages followest not thee. <gasps> Therefore, thou art a sheep. <laughs> Such another proof will make me cry fast. But dost thou hear? Gavest thou my letter to Julia? I, sir, I, a lost button, gave your letter to her, a lace button, and she, a lace button, gave me a lost button, nothing for my labor. But what said she? Open your purse, that the money in the matter may be both at once delivered. <laughs> well, sir, here is for thy paint. Now. What said she? Truly, sir, I think you'll hardly win her. What? What? Couldst thou perceive so much from her? Sir, I could perceive nothing at all from her. No, not so much as a ducat for delivering your letter. Being so hard to me that brought your mind, I fear she'll prove as hard to you in telling your mind. Give her no token but stones, for she's as hard as steel. But what says she? Nothing? No! Not so much as take this for thy pains! <laughs> <laughs> to testify your bounty, I thank you. You have tested me. In requital whereof, henceforth, carry your letters yourself! And so, sir, I'll commend you to my master! <laughs> Go and get thee gone to save thy ship from wreck, which cannot perish having thee aboard, being destined to a drier death on shore. <laughs> I must go send some better messenger. I fear my Julia would not deign my lines, receiving them from such a worthless post. Bye. 
Fantino, what sad talk was that one with my brother held you in the cloister? It was of his nephew, Proteus, your son. Why, what of him? He wondered that your lordship would suffer him to spend his youth at home, while other men of slender reputation put forth their sons to seek for vermin out. <laughs> some to the wars to try their fortune there. Some to discover islands some to the studious universities. <laughs> for any or for all these exercises, he said that Proteus, your son, was meet and did request me to importune you to let him spend his time no more at home, which would be great impeachment to his age in having known no travel in his youth. Nor needs thou much importune me to that, where on this month I have been hammering. <laughs> <laughs> I have considered well this loss of time and how you cannot be a perfect man. Not being tried and tutored in the world. Industry is by experience achieved and perfected by the swift course of time. <laughs> Tell me then, whether were I best to send him? I think your lordship is not ignorant of his companion. Valentine attends the Emperor in his royal court. I know it well! For good, I think your lordship sent him thither. There shall he practice tilts and tournaments, hear sweet discourse, converse with and take the of every exercise worthy of you. Noble is a bird. I like thy counsel. Well hast thou counseled. And that thou mayest perceive how much I like it, the exhibition of it shall make known. Even with the speediest expedition, I will dispatch him to the emperor's court. Tomorrow may it please you. And Don Alfonso, with other gentlemen of good esteem, are journeying to the emperor and command their service to his will. Good company, with them shall Proteus go. And in good time, now will we break with him. Sweet love, sweet lines, sweet life! Here is her hand, the agent of her heart. Here is her oath for love, her honor's pawn. Oh, oh that our fathers would have plowed our love to seal our happiness with their consents. Oh, heavenly Julia. Tis a word or two of 
commendations sent from Valentine, delivered by a friend that came from him. <laughs> Lend me the letter. Let me see what news. Oh, there is no news, my lord, but that he writes how happily he lives, how well beloved and daily graced by the emperor, wishing me with him partner of his court. How stand you affected by his wish? As one relying upon your lordship's will and not depending <laughs> upon his friendly wish. <laughs> my will is something sort of his wish. Use not that I thus suddenly proceed, for what I will, I will, and there an end. I am resolved that thou shalt spend some time with Valentinus in the Emperor's court. Whatever maintenance he from his friends receives, like exhibition thou shalt have from me. T -t Tomorrow be in readiness to go. My lord, I cannot be so soon provided. Please, you deliberate the day or two. Look, what thou wants will be sent after thee. No more of stay. Thou must go. I am. Parentary! <laughs> and you know you shall be employed to hasten upon his departure. <laughs> Thus have I shunned the fire for fear of burning and drenched me in the sea where I am drowned. <laughs> accepted most against my love. Oh, how the spring of love resembleth the uncertain glory of an April day, which now, or an hour ago, shows all the beauty of the sun. And by and by, a cloud takes all away. <laughs> Why, this it is. My heart accords thereto. Yet a thousand times it answers no. <laughs> Sir, I know that well enough. What dost thou know? 
Yet she is not so fair as her beauty, well favored. I mean that her beauty is exquisite, but her favor, infinite. But that's because the one is tested and the other is out of all count. How painted and how out of count? Mary, sir, so painted to make her fair that no man counts of her beauty. Come speak to me. I account of her beauty. You never saw her since she was deformed. How long has she been deformed? Ever since you loved her. Uh, <laughs> I have loved her since I saw her, and still I find her beauty. If only. you love her, you cannot see her. Why? Because love is blind. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that you had mine eyes, or your own eyes had the lights they were wont to have when you chided Sir Brodius for going as Garter. What should I see then? Your own present folly and her passing deformity, or he, being in love, could not see to Garter his hose at you. Being in love cannot see to put form in your home. Be like this, boy, for yes, you are in love. For yesterday morning, you could not see to wipe my shoes. True, sir. I was in love with my bed. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you. You swing me for my love, which makes me the bolder to hide you for yours. In conclusion, I stand affected to her. And when you were said that your affection would cease. Last night. She enjoined me to write some lines to one she loves. And have you? I have. Are they not lamely written? <laughs> no! <laughs> but as well as I could do them. Peace! Here she comes! Did you perceive her earnest? 
she gave me none, except an angry word. Why, she hath given you a letter. That's the letter I read to her friend. And that letter hath she delivered, and there, an end. And would it were no worse. I'll warrant you, tis as well. For often have you read to her, and she, in modesty, or else for want of idle time, could not again reply. <laughs> or fearing else some messenger might her mind discover, herself hath taught her love himself to write <laughs> unto her lover. <laughs> <laughs> All this I speak in print for print I found it. Why muse you, sir? Tis dinner time. <laughs> I have dined. I, oh. but hearken, though the chameleon love can feed on the air, I am one that am nourished by my victuals and would fain have meat. <laughs> oh, be not like your mistress. Be moved. Be moved. <laughs> <laughs>
I have received my proportion like the prodigious son and am going with Sir Proteus to the Imperial's court. I think crab my dog be the sourest natured dog that lives. So, like, my mother weeping, my father wailing, my sister crying, our maid howling, our cat wringing her hands, and all our house in a great perplexity, yet did not this cruel hearted cur shed one tear. <laughs> he is a stone. He's very pebble stone and has no more pity in him than a dog. <laughs> My grandam, having no eyes, look you, wept yourself blind to my parting. Hey, I'll show you the manner of it. This shoe is my father. No, this left shoe is my father. No, no, this left shoe is my mother. Hey, that cannot be so neither. Ah, it is so. It is so. This shoe with the hole in it is my mother. This my father. There it is. Now, sir, this scab is my sister. For look you, she is as white as a lily and as small as a wand. I am the dog. No, the dog is himself and I. No, the dog is me and I am myself. I. So, so. Now come I to my father. Father. Father, your blessing. Now should not the shoe speak a word for weeping? Now should I kiss my father? <laughs> well, he weeps on. <laughs> now, come on. Come on. Mother. Well, I should kiss her. Why? Oh, there it is. Here's my mother's breath up and down. <laughs> now, come on to my sister. Mark the moan she makes. Jerkin. How? What? <laughs> Angry, Sir Thurio, do you change color? Give him 
leaf, Madam Court. He is a kind of chameleon. That hath more mind to feed on your blood than live in your air. You have said so, sir. I, sir. And done, too, for this time. I know it well, sir. You always end. Ere you begin. <laughs> a fine volley of words, gentlemen, and quickly shot off. It is indeed, madam. For we thank the giver. Well, who is that, sir? Yourself, sweet lady. For you gave the fire. Sir Thurio borrows his wit from your books. Then what borrows kindly in your company. Sir, if you spend word for word with me, I shall make your wit bankrupt. I know it well, sir. You have an exchequer of words, and, I think, no other treasure can your followers for It appears by their bare liberties that they live by your bare words. But no more, gentlemen, no more. Here comes my father. Now, daughter Sylvia, you are hard beset. Sir Valentine, your father is in good health. What say you to a letter from your friends of much good news? My lord, I... I will be thankful to any happy messenger from thence. Know ye Don Antonio, your countryman? Ah, my good lord, I, I know the gentleman to be of worth and worthy estimation, and not without desert so well reputed. I thought he a son. Ah, my good lord, a son that well deserves the honor and regard of such a father. You know him well, then. I know him as myself. From our infancy, we have conversed and spent our hours together. And though myself have been an idle truant, omitting the sweet benefit of time to clothe myself with <coughs> angel-like so hath uh, Sir Proteus, for that's his name, made use and fair advantage of his days. His years but young, but his experience old. It said unmellowed, but his judgment ripe. And, in a word, for all behind his worth comes the praises that I now bestow. He is complete in feature and in mind, with all good grace to grace a gentleman. Be sure me, sir, but if you make this good, he is as fit for an emperor's love as meet to be an emperor's counselor. Well, sir, this gentleman has come to me with commendations from great potentates, and here he needs to spend his time a while. Oh! I think there's no uh, unfortunate news to you. My lord! Had I wished the thing, it hath been he! Welcome in then, my daughter. So we ask you to be Sir Thurio. For Sir Valentine, I need not cite him to it. I will send him hither to you presently. This is the gentleman I have told your ladyship would have come with me, but that his lady held his gaze locked in her crystal look. Be like that now she hath enfranchised them upon some other pawn for fealty. Nay, I think she holds them prisoners still. Nay, then he should be blind. And being blind, how can he see his way to seek out you? My lady, love hath twenty pairs of eyes. <laughs> they say that love hath not an eye at all. <laughs> to see such lovers, Thurio, as yourself, upon a homely object, love can wait. Have done, have done. <laughs> Here comes the gentleman. <laughs> welcome, dear Proteus! Mistress, I beseech you, confirm this welcome with some special favor. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
shall he marry her? No, not you. What? Are they broken? No, they're both as whole as a fish. Why then, how stands the matter with them? Marry thus. When it stands well with him, it stands well with her. What an ass art thou, I understand thee not. What a block art thou that thou canst not? My staff understands me. <laughs> what thou sayest? I. And what I do, too. Look thee, I'll but lean, and my staff understands me. <laughs> it stands under thee, indeed. I stand under and understand is all one. But, but tell me truth, will be a match? Ask my dog. If he say I, it will. If he say nay, it will. <laughs> if he shake his tail and say nothing, it will. The conclusion is then that it will. Thou shalt never get such a secret from me but by a parable. Tis well that I get it so. But look, how sayest thou that my master has become a notable lover? <laughs> I never knew him otherwise. Then how? A notable lover, as thou hast reported him to be. Why, thou horse and thou mistakest me? Why, fool, I meant not thee, I meant thy master. I tell thee, my master has become a hot love burr. And I tell thee, I <laughs> care not. <laughs> he burned <laughs> Julia, shall I be forsworn? The love fair Sylvia, shall I be forsworn? <laughs> and to wrong my friend, I shall be much forsworn. Yeah. <laughs> and even that power which gave me first my oath provokes me to this threefold perjury. Love bade me swear, and love bids me forswear. Oh. Sweet suggesting love, if thou hast sinned, teach me thy tempted subject to excuse it. First, I did adore a twinkling star. Ah, oh, but now I worship a celestial sun. Oh, bye, bye. Unreverent tongue. Call her bad, whose sovereignty so oft thou hast preferred, but with twenty thousand soul confirming O's, I cannot leave to love, and yet I do. Oh, there I leave to love, where I should love. Valentine I lose, and Julia I lose. If I keep them, I needs must lose myself. If I lose them, Thus find I by their loss, for Valentine myself, for Julia, Selby. I will forget that Julia is alive, <laughs> remembering that my love to her is dead. And Valentine, I will hold as an enemy. I cannot now prove constant to myself without some treachery used against Valentine. This night, he meaneth with a corded ladder to climb celestial Sylvia's chamber window. Now then, presently I will hie unto her father to inform him of their disguising and pretended flight, who all enraged will banish Valentine. To that guy right over there. <laughs> he intends shall wed his daughter. But Valentine being gone, I will quickly cross by some sly trick blunt Thurio's dull proceedings. <laughs> Love, lend me wings to make my purpose swift, as thou hast lent me wit to plot this drift. <laughs>
gentle kiss to every sedge he overtaketh with his pilgrimage. And so, by many winding nooks he strays with willing sport to the wild ocean. Then let me go, it hindered off my course. I'll be as patient as a gentle stream, and make a pacify with each weary step. For the last step hath brought me to my love, when there I'll rest, as after much turmoil, a blessed soul doth an Elysium. But in what habit, madam, shall you go along? Not like a woman, for I would prevent the loose encounters of lascivious men. Gentle <laughs> oh, Lucera, permit me with such means as may beseem some well-reputed page. Why, then your ladyship must cut your hair. No, girl. I'll knit it up in silken strings with twenty odd conceited true love knots. <laughs> oh, to be fantastic may become a youth of greater time than I shall show to be. What fashion, madam, shall I make your breeches? Why, even in what fashion thou best enter? <laughs> Why, you must needs have them with the card piece, madam. <laughs> out, out, Lucia, that would be ill favor. A round hose, madam, now is not worth a pin unless you have it. <laughs> God, these two stick pins on. <laughs> Lucetta, as thou lovest me, let me have what thou thinkest meet and is most mannerly. Oh, but tell me, wench, how will the world repute me for having undertaken so unsteady a journey? Though I fear me it will make me scandalized. If you think so, then stay at home and go not. Nay, that I will not. Then never dream on infamy, but go. Proteus like your journey when you come, no matter who's displeased when you are gone. I fear me, he will scarce be pleased with all. Oh, that is the least, Lucetta, of my fears. Oh, a thousand oaths, an ocean of his tears, and instances of infinite of love for in me welcome to my Proteus. All these are servants to deceitful men. Oh, base men, who use them to so base effect. Oh, the truer stars did govern Proteus's birth. His words are bonds, his oaths are oracles, his love sincere, his thoughts immaculate, his tears, pure messengers sent from his heart, to his heart as far from fraud as heaven from earth. Pray heaven he proves so when you come to him. <laughs> Of my tarrying. If 